Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, today we will talk about something which is related, obviously, to electricity, but uh, it has practically no um, importance in, in everyday life, but it's very, very important from an educational standpoint. So today's lecture is educational more than practical. Um, Besides, uh, I know that many um, universities or some kind of schools, whatever, they are actually asking uh, students to solve this particular problem, which I'm going to present to you, again, just as a test of how well educated they are. Because this problem, though uh, the final formula might be a little bit more complex, it's really in a simple form, encompassing your knowledge about electricity. So, um, let's just talk about this particular problem. Um, we are talking about the speed of electrons. Speed of electrons as they are moving, carrying the charge with themselves. And basic, basically, we would like to know how fast they are moving. Now, this... Uh, uh, problem, uh, the solution to this problem I'm going to, to, to present right now, it's actually part of the whole course called Physics for Teens, presented on the website unizor.com. I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the website because it has um, detailed notes for each lecture. All lectures are obviously organized in some systematic way. Um, and there are some things which I put into the notes and they do not really present um, on the board, for instance. Uh, in this particular case, I will present the general formula, but I will not use this formula in practical calculations for some specific case, which I put into, into the notes. So it's very important to use the website. And the website is completely free, there are no ads. Okay, so how can we calculate the speed of electrons as they are moving um, along the wire. Well, we all know that if we will switch on the um, electric switch, the lamp will, uh, will be lit immediately, or practically immediately. Well, with the speed of light. Um, now, does it mean that the electrons are actually moving? Okay, here is our thing. Let's say this is the source of electricity and this is the switch which we will flip into the uh, uh, closed position. Now uh, probably this is some kind of a lamp and this is some kind of a source of information, uh, source of, not information, source of energy, electric energy, generator, battery, whatever. And as soon as we flip the switch the electrons from the negative uh, side will start going, 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 going back to the positive. Now, if this battery is powerful enough, or if it's a generator which generates all the time, then the, uh, the electric current will circulate here and the lamp will, will be lit all the time. So, how fast electrons are moving? Not, definitely not with the speed of light, which is actually the speed of uh, uh, of electric field as it is propagating through the uh, uh, through the electric wire. So we are talking about electric current, specific electric current, um, and we would like to find out what's the speed of electrons which carry this particular current. So let's just assume that the current we have, so we have something which is called amperage. So it's given the amperage, the current, this is the number of coulombs per second. Number of coulombs per second. Now we have to find out what's the speed of electrons which are moving there. Okay. So, how can we find this out? Well, first of all, our first um, interest is how the electric current actually is happening inside 
the, uh, the, the wire. I mean, there are atoms, let's just for simplicity consider it's copper. So there are some um, uh, atoms of copper inside the wire. This is the wire, and these are atoms of copper, right? Now, each atom has electrons around it. As soon as we apply the electric field, so this is electric field, so we have some negative uh, charge on one end of this uh, wire and positive charge on another end. As soon as we apply, the electrons will start their movement because they will be pushed away from the negative, right? This is the axis of uh, electrons, this is deficiency of electrons. So the electrons which are circulating each atom will experience the force which will push them into that direction. So, if we know the current, we know the number of coulombs per second which are traveling uh, from negative uh, end to the positive end, we can very easily find out how many electrons are needed to carry this current, right? Every electron has certain amount of charge in it, e. which is, uh, well, it, it's negative, it's something like minus 1.6 times 10 to, I don't remember, I think it's minus 19 of Coulomb. Right? So, if we know the number of coulombs per second, and each electron carries that many uh, uh, coulombs of electricity, we can divide I, divided by E, and what do we have as a result? Well, as a result, we have the number of electrons, right? So this number of electrons, each second are traveling from left to right, from negative to positive in this, in this particular case. Uh, this many electrons are traveling and they carry all the electricity which we need. They carry the current. So this is an amperage divided by um, the charge of one particular electron. Okay, so we have the number of electrons. Somehow we have to convert it into their speed. Well, let's just consider. The, these electrons are contained in, let's say, certain segment of the wire. If we know this length of this segment, and we know that each segment, all electrons, which we are talking about, are moving from left to right, that is the speed of, uh, this length is actually a speed of electrons because they cover this particular distance per second, right? So, this is the number of electrons per second which are carrying all our electricity. So, all we know, all we have to know right now is where exactly is this uh, <coughs> segment of the wire where all these electrons are located. And this is related to inner structure of the atoms, obviously. So, we know the number of electrons, we have to convert it into basically the length of this segment. Obviously, we consider that we do have the area of this um, wire. So, if we know the volume, which is the uh, the, the place where all these electrons are located. We'll divide it by area and we will get the length of this segment. So, what's happening inside um, the wire with all the atoms of um, whatever the, the metal or whatever the material is used for, um, for the wire? Now, the atoms, as we know, contain nucleus, which has inside protons and, electro uh, and neutrons. And there is a certain number of electrons which are circulating around this nucleus. 
Well, the interesting thing is that they are circulating on different orbits. And every orbit has certain number of electrons it can actually contain. The smaller orbits, the closer to the nucleus, can carry less electrons uh, on, on, on their orbits. The further from nucleus we go, the more room we have for electrons to be on those orbits. Now, don't ask me why uh, we have certain distinct orbits. There are certain theories, very involved theories related to quantum mechanics, etc., which explain it. So right now we are not going into this, we are just giving the fact. So the inner orbits have certain number of electrons and there is a maximum and uh, every other uh, orbit which is um, further of the nucleus has its own maximum number of electrons it can carry. Now, how many electrons are all together? Well, as many as many protons are inside, right? Because they should be neutral. Now, just for example, if we will consider copper, for instance. This is the chemical cuprum. Uh, it has uh, 29 electrons, 29 protons, and 34 to 36 neutrons. So these are in the nucleus, and these 29 electrons are circulating around. Now, the nature is built in such a way, <laughs> I will use this particular uh, statement, that the inner orbit has two electrons. The next one has a, uh, eight electrons, and the next one has 18 electrons. Now, I told you that the further we are from the nucleus, the more electrons can be uh, circulating on that orbit. So these are maximums. So what's my sum? 10, 28, we have 29. So we have one more. So there is one electron here on the outermost, on the fourth from the uh, nucleus orbit. And um, so this is one. So this orbit is not completely filled up. And th the interesting property is that only the electrons from this outermost orbit participate in the normal um, transfer of electric current. I mean, obviously we can we can uh, establish certain conditions when we will just, you know, swoop up all the electrons from the atom. That's probably possible too, but it's not happening in under normal circumstances, okay? So if we're talking about regular lamp and le regular electricity, then the, the forces are not that great. So it's only the outermost electrons are actually participating. So, What's interesting is, in this particular case, if we know the number of electrons, based on whatever the material our um, wire is made of, we have to find out how many electrons are on the outermost orbit. And let's consider this number is Ne. So this is number of electrons <coughs> at the outermost orbit of the material um, the wire is made of. And in case of copper, and E is equal to 1. Because it's only 1. We have 28 out of 29 are uh, fully um, are, are completing, fully completing the, the orbits, and on the outer orbit we have only 1. So in case of copper, and, and E is equal to 1. In case of other metals, like aluminum for instance, or or silver, that's a different number. And they don't remember which one, doesn't really matter. <coughs> so, Ne is number of electrons of this particular material 
at the outer orbit of their atoms. Now, because of that, don't need this anymore. Now, because of that, from the number of electrons, and knowing the number of electrons in each atom which participate in the electric current, we can find out the number of atoms. So, the number of atoms is equal to Ne, total number of electrons, divided by Ne, number of electrons, let's call it active electrons. This is number of el active electrons per each atom. And again, in, in case of a copper, it's one. So, that would be equal to I divided by Ne times E. Now, we have the number of atoms, right? <coughs> so, remember our picture? These are atoms. So, we know the number of atoms which contain all those active electrons which are needed to transfer per second this particular amount of coulombs, all right? This particular amperage. It's per second. Now, what's the volume of this? How can we find out if we know the number of atoms, how can we find out how much they weigh? Or what's their mass, actually? Because if we know the mass, we can divide it by density, and that would give us the, the volume. Now, density, again, is known characteristic, so uh, we will use it, obviously. Uh, but now we have to find out what's the mass of all these uh, atoms. So, we have the number of atoms, we have to convert it into their mass. And then, divided by uh, density, we will get the volume. And divided by area of the wire, we will get the length. Okay? Alright, so, how can we find out? Well, we do know something about mass of uh, substance. There is a, an Avogadro number. So, what is Avogadro number? Avogadro number is the weight in grams of one mole of substance. And one mole of substance, one mole of substance is um, amount of grams number of grams number of grams equal to atomic mass. So, Avogadro number is number of atoms in one mole, and one mole of the substance is number of grams, which is equal to atomic mass. Now, why is this? Well, let's just think it about this again. Now, these are atoms, right? Atoms have nucleus and electrons. Atomic mass is basically the uh, number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus. Now, in case of uh, copper, for instance, it's 29 protons and 34 or 36 neutrons. So, there are different, obviously, atomic masses in, in these particular cases. And uh, it, 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 it's an approximate value. Uh, but if you will add them together, you will have, what, 63 uh, or 65. So, basically, the atomic mass uh, of uh, copper is something like in between. It's like 64 point something. I don't remember what exactly. Now, why is this? Well, it's because atomic mass of carbon, which contains 12 uh, particles in the nucleus, is exactly 12. So, whenever we are going to some other um, uh, material, some other element, um, and, and protons and neutrons are probably the same as those which are inside the um, nucleus of, of carbon. But the protons and neutrons are slightly different, so basically the number is not exactly the even number. 
that's why we have 64 point something. Now, if, it, if we are actually okay with some approximation, then considering nucleus of the carbon has 12 particles, uh, uh, protons and neutrons, and its uh, atomic mass is by definition exactly 12, then atomic mass of one particular particle is about one. So that's why a number of these particles gives you the atomic mass of uh, any other nucleus. But in any case, considering protons and neutrons are slightly different, very slightly, but still different, and there are maybe some other things involved which we are not talking about, the atomic mass is approximately the number of particles inside the nucleus. Now, obviously, since nucleus is the most massive part of the, of the, um, of the atom, electrons are, relative to nucleus, it's just one minuscule part. Electrons are very light. It's nucleus which constitute, which constitutes the, uh, the the mass of the atom. That's why the bigger the nucleus, the bigger the uh, uh, mass uh, of uh, each atom. And if we do it proportionally, we have a number of grams equal to atomic mass. So in this case, we're talking about 64, for instance, gram of copper, or 12 gram of carbon or uh, um, whatever, one gram of uh, uh, hydrogen, all right? It corresponds to the number of elementary particles inside the nucleus. All of these should contain very, very similar number of particles, right? Bigger particles and bigger mole of uh, this particular substance, but the number of particles is the same, and this is the Avogadro number. So we know that um, considering the atomic mass is uh, ma so ma is atomic mass of our material uh, which we are which we have our wire is made of so in case of copper ma is 64 so if uh, if this is atomic mass so we know that ma gram of our substance, okay, of our material, uh, uh, have n a uh, atoms. This is Avogadro number. But we know our mass is different. Our number of atoms is n a n atoms. So what's their mass? Well, it's a primitive proportion, right? So how to determine MA? MA is equal to this is the mass of these atoms. It's equal to MA times N atoms divided by the Avogadro number which is ma times n atom is i divided by n e e and Avogadro number n a So this is the mass of all the atoms which contain all the active electrons which deliver the amount of electric charge we need per second. So all these electrons inside of these, all active electrons inside of this particular piece of the wire each second moving forward. So the length is actually the speed of these electrons, right? So how to calculate this length? Well, since we know the mass, we can find out the volume of this, which is basically mass divided by rho, which is density. We know the density of material. 
like in case of uh, copper something like eight point something gram per cubical centimeter or we can convert it into millimeters or cubical meters whatever so this is the volume and if we have a volume and this is considered to be probably a cylinder right we have to divide uh, length would be equal to ma divided by rho and divided by area if this is the area of the wire so we have to know the area of the volume of the, of, of the wire obviously which gives us the relatively large but understandable formula understandable because I just did it uh, one step after another divided by n e e n a rho and a so this is the formula so this is the length of this piece of the wire which contains all the ele active electrons which deliver the charge every second so which means this e is a speed actually this length is how uh, long is the movement uh, the distance how long is the distance covered by active electrons um, per second right now what is what let me just explain again what is MA MA is the atomic mass uh, of the material so it's basically how many uh, protons and neutrons are in the nucleus like in case of um, uh, copper it's about 64 a little bit more than 64 point something because neutrons and protons weigh slightly differently I is supposed to be given as an input to this uh, problem it's the current it's how uh, how much electricity in coulombs are transferred through the wire per second this is the current now what's NE? NE is number of active electrons on the outermost orbit of the atom of the material this wire is made of in case of copper it's one in case of aluminum I don't remember how how many etc E is charge amount of electricity of each individual electrons that's why i divided by lowercase e is the number of active electrons we need right and then we divided by n e to get the number of atoms which carry these electrons and then divide multiplied by n a uh, in, in the denominator and MA in the numerator we basically transfer it into mass and then mass divided by rho will give you my, my uh, volume uh, because this is the density and A is cross-section of the wire that gives me the length now in the notes for this lecture I have calculated this thing for copper of certain diameter or certain cross uh, section um, area and certain uh, current certain amperage um, and again <laughs> the purpose of this is basically to to give you a lot of different things from different uh, other areas around the electricity so it's a structure of atomic structure um, it's it's even geometry when we are divided uh, volume by uh, area of the um, cross section uh, to get the length of the cylinder I mean there are many different aspects of this which which I think is very educational it has again no practical um, uh, purpose at all people don't really need this information how fast electrons are moving inside the wire but it's an interesting problem and uh, obviously people were thinking about this and you know what uh, quite surprisingly for me by the way that the real movement it's really in millimeters even in fractions of millimeters per second so it's really slow I mean if you will calculate it for a few different cases you will have 
millimeters really per second even fractions of millimeters so that's interesting and uh, that completes my lecture today I do suggest you to read the notes because the notes are um, uh, also they, 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 can, they, they contain exact calculations for some specific case which is again very interesting I would say and again don't forget that this is something which uh, in many cases students are asked as you know like solve this problem to to demonstrate how knowledgeable they are so that's why I have decided to include this particular problem for purely educational purposes um, okay that's it thank you very much and good luck <laughs>